Hey, how dare you have a family? Break the jam, guys! There should still be a Divas Championship. Not having it is an insult. The women's locker room back then was so catty and gossipy and blah, blah, blah. There's always some of that. But at the end of the day, we fought for each other. Welcome everyone to Ring the Bell, this is DS, and today I am here with the first lady of pro wrestling, Maria Canales. <laughs> yes! Hello there, how are you? I'm so excited! Right <laughs> before your triumphant ROH return. Mm-hmm, yep. When can we expect to see you on ROH? In the next few weeks, I have some very big announcements, so I'm super excited about that. It's a great group of guys, and um, I'm hoping soon you'll be able to see even more of the group of girls that are over there. Oh, that is some really good news. <laughs> awesome, awesome. To prepare for your triumphant return to pro wrestling, we have fan-voted top five moments of Maria Canellis. Are you ready for it? I, I'm ready. Let's do this. So starting with the first moment, and it is... Maria and the WWE Champion, John! Mocking Maria right in her face as she's Two thousand six Raw when you main evented and won by pinning your fellow red haired girl Lita. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I didn't know what was happening until that day. So oh. it was um, very much like, oh, okay, I guess we're doing this. Um, of course, though, I was in the ring with three professionals. I mean, they are absolutely incredible. They had had a phenomenal career by the time they worked with me. So um, I was kind of the, the extra in the whole thing. But I was super excited. And of course, John, like, he took care of me throughout everything. Um, um, and you know, it was it was really an honor to be able to perform with them in the main event. And it's so funny when they talk about like, oh, you know, the girls are getting main events now. Well, there were several main events um, of the girls that I worked with. Yeah, yeah. How was it working with the legendary Lita? She's incredible. She was actually one of the people got that I first like fell in love with that I I wanted to work with in professional wrestling. She got me into wrestling her and Trish so working with her was like a dream come true from joining the diva search 2004 all the way to main eventing oh my god main eventing in 2006 how was that journey to be the pro wrestler how was that training process because there is no performance center or anything so there was Ohio Valley Wrestling we did kind of train but it wasn't really like um it wasn't really regimented like it is now and I was on the road so I was learning moves when sometimes I was out there live. It wasn't like I had practiced these moves a million times before I was sent out there uh, live on Monday Night Raw. Some of these things I was learning while I was in the ring. And um, so it was it was an incredible experience. Um, I'm glad I was young because I, I didn't think twice about it. I just did it. I was like, all right, well, I guess we're having a match tonight or I guess I'm doing these five moves that I've never done before tonight or I had some great people that I got to work in the ring with and they definitely pulled us through. I mean, they always talk about the divas being, um, you know, the, the models, the ones that came from modeling, like Kelly Kelly and Eve or, or me or Maurice. But you, you forget that there were vets that we were working with. I mean, everyone from Victoria to uh, Lita to Trish to then, and then you came up to my generation of Jillian and Melina and Beth and Mickey. Like we had some highly talented wrestlers that we worked with. So even though I was just learning, these girls already had honed their craft. So thank God they were there and they uh, got us through. <laughs> So when you just joined the locker room in 2004 with the veterans there and you were just in there, how was that like? Who were the, some of the girls that really trained you and like, you know, took care of you? I don't know. I read somewhere where someone said that, oh, the, the women's locker room back then was so catty and gossipy and blah, blah, blah. You know, uh, there's always some of that. But at, at the end of the day, we fought for each other. The guys handled their business and the women... That's not my experience at all. My experience was even with, even 
when I was feuding with somebody, um, whether it be uh, personally or just on camera, we still fought for each other to have more time in the ring, to to have a bigger uh, bigger platform within WWE. So all the girls fought for each other, you know, even the ones that I didn't like or they didn't like me at the time because we were young. And it's weird, like thinking back on it, like Victoria took care of all of us. You know, she was like mama bear. She would be one of the first ones that would jump in the ring with you so you could try something on her. So I would definitely say her and Gail was there and and Gail's just such a tremendous performer and luckily I got to work with her again when I worked in Impact but you know uh, Beth was amazing and uh, you know, she was so solid, you know, when you were in the ring with her, you never were worried that things were going to get screwed up. You were just like, and then Nikki was hilarious. You know, she, she had a way of just like easing all the tensions. Like she would say the most dirtiest things to you sometimes when you were in the ring. And I'm like, no, I'm trying to be serious here. You know, all these stories that you hear, I, I, I didn't looking back on it. I never think about it that way. The guys, I, you know, some of them, oof. But, like, the girls, I always think of us as this incredible team of, like, fighting for each other. Earlier in your career, another big segment that you were involved with was Trial of Bischoff. Could you please ask me with Mr. Sacco? Eric Bischoff abused his power in a way that was malicious and capricious. We got to see some different side of Maria. And now, until to this day, there is this rumor about the dual personality, character, storyline. There was supposed to be uh, a different side, a different character, whether that be a split personality, which is what I was pitching for, as I really wanted this split personality. Uh, where one was on SmackDown, one was on Raw, but it never never panned out that way. But there was also the idea of me just doing more of what you saw in the trial um, okay. and bringing that forward. Like to just have these random moments of, you know, just rocket scientist moments, you know, whatever the topic may be, what, whether it was political or when we were, you know, whether it be law or oh. um, to, to have those those turning points um, in the character. And it didn't happen, but it was definitely fun to think about. So this is a cult moment that a lot of the girls and gays love. So be aware of that. <laughs> this interview segment, when- Oh, yes. Um, I think that was the interview where she knocked my filling out. But I don't know. I don't know for sure if it was that particular uh, slap, but when she slapped me, she knocked the filling out one time. And I don't know if I was gritting my teeth or what happened, but there could have actually been some real life moaning in that moment. It is real pain. Let's move to the second moment, and it is. Your Playboy storyline that culminated into you defeating Santino Morella. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't the first choice for Playboy. Oh. Um, there were a few girls that were ahead of me, um, and then they asked me to do it. And uh, I had to make a few phone calls. Um, I contacted my sister who was still in high school at the time she's seven years younger than me so i had to like make sure she was going to be okay with it and then um i talked to my family and they were like well how much are you getting paid and then it was yeah i think you should probably do it then <laughs> <laughs> but for me it was just so freeing and i loved it and like I I really enjoyed the the whole experience of it it really was just so much fun to do and then to have all the women join me and beating up Santino was awesome like he was so much fun to work with I loved working with him he is one of the funniest people I've ever met and um yeah to have all the girls with me um and out there and beating up on Santino that was great a lot of the previous Playboy storyline has been about jealousy about who's prettier who's sexier but this one was very feminist and very very empowering. Well, I wanted to push it even further. After that 
uh, the Playboy cover reveal. I was really hoping to um, get more of a run at the Divas Championship. I had been training a lot. I was going to shows early and training with Michelle McCool and um, but it just, it, it didn't end up happening. We wanted to push it even further. And that's as much as WWE allowed me to get out of it for that time, because they were very cautious about um, you know, having their female stars be too big. I'll never forget when I talked to Stephanie McMahon one time about getting a t-shirt and she said, women t-shirts just don't sell. And I was like, oh. you know what? We're going to figure out a way sometime in my life to, to to make that happen. And then New Japan ended up giving me um, two t-shirt runs. It didn't happen at that time, but I think it was kind of a prequel of what was to come for me and what was to happen in my career. I mean, we all love this storyline, but the road to being to WrestleMania, it's been rough. Your partner changed last minute, the light went off. It was wild. I mean, Candice had broke her collarbone and I think before Mania, she had broken it the second time. I'm trying to think like that was a a while ago but um uh, and I was in the ring with her too and I just remember trying to grab her hand and she was like no 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 and I was like okay and then I went over to the other side and she was she felt so bad she wanted to be there with me on the other side of that I have those great moments with Ashley that I'll cherish forever you know it was it was a rough road but I also really appreciate that I got to work with Ashley at that time oh look at Maria the plan was on going uh Oh, wait a minute, did the Undertaker just arrive? But then when the lights went out, oh my gosh, I was in there with Beth and all I could think was, is Undertaker coming out because we're terrible? <laughs> like, here comes Undertaker. Like, not not the other girls I was in the ring with, but I personally was that bad. But come to find out, they had, um, they had busted a breaker and um, they were just running too much power and they didn't have the capacity for it. So if Beth just the veteran she is she just said to me just keep going and so we did we slowed things down and we just kept going and the lights came back on but wow what a wrestlemania moment i mean from here your popularity was just keep going on until you won the diva of the year in 2009. the slammy goes to maria oh wow wow is the diva of the year to bring that back. And you seem night. really surprised. Did you know about this or? I knew right before I went out. I did know, but only because Batista was interrupting me and they didn't want that to be like this weird like moment. What Kanye had just done that to Taylor Swift. So like that was in that same year or it, it yeah. was like within a few months of that happening. So they wanted that same kind of moment. But I was surprised. Like I was super, su they told me backstage. I was like, no, this isn't happening. Um, but yeah, I was I was super happy. Um, you know, it's, it's one of those things that you could just say, like I did that, that's cool. Yeah, you were the Taylor Swift of WWE. I, and Batista was so sweet about it. Oh my gosh. Like I, and he, he's such a great guy. Like he, I think it might've been my mom's birthday, either that night or another night we had all gone out. And I, um, we, there was a group of us and he bought my mom dinner and I was just like, Aww. such a nice guy. So let's move to the third moment. And it is. Maria! Your feud with Michelle McCool over Divas Championship. Yeah, she's a consummate professional. I mean, she's incredible in the ring. She went from coming in as a school teacher to becoming a, a really powerful woman in the ring. And she's so incredibly athletic. She has a background in, background in gymnastics. So um, she was awesome in the ring. And I just remember training with her time and time again. Um, and she gave me her finisher, like the, fir the first time like she had done it, she gave it to me at a house show. And it was just such a cool moment. And um, then I took it later from AJ Styles in Ring of Honor. So, or at least got put up for it from AJ Styles. Working with Michelle and then that moment where she turned on me when I was the referee. Oh. And Michelle McCool. I gotta tell you, Maria does not. Oh. 
and just listening to the crowd and how they turned on her because she wasn't turning into like a real true heel. And at that time you wanted real heels. And I was the baby face, like uh, ultimate baby face. You know, I, I, there was no, no doing anything different at that time, but um, yeah. So Michelle turned and turned on me and that was, that was really cool. Speaking of finisher, your beautiful bulldog. People love it. How did you develop it? Well, I th- I can't remember if it was Matt Hardy or Trish told me to do it. But then like Fit uh, helped me like train to make sure it was right and everything. But um, it was something I could do to everybody on the roster. And that's the biggest thing with finishers is like you have to be able to do it to everybody because – you know, we, we had a vast array of, you know, very short girls and then taller girls too. And so you didn't want to finish her that didn't make sense to give to the taller girls. I liked it too, cause you could hook it from anywhere and, and do the finish, but yeah, it was, uh, it was fun. And I don't even think I named it. I think, I think it was either JR or I, I have no idea, but somebody named it. Um, and I was like, okay, that's cool. You know, I was, I was just happy to have a finisher. I think I might've used it and won maybe Maybe once or twice. <laughs> <laughs> you are so close to Divas Championship, and a lot of fans still to this day think you should have gotten it. Yeah. What do you think? Um. So for me, it wasn't. It wasn't the most important thing. It just wasn't. It would have been nice to be included in that group. Um. But for me, like having those matches and working with the plethora of women I've get got to work with, um, that's more important to me. And I never believed that I deserved it like some of the girls did. Candice, like she got to be an incredible worker in the ring and Michelle McCool did. And, you know, the, these women, they, they truly deserved it. And, you know, would it have been nice to have? Sure, but it wasn't my ultimate goal. I do think that um, there should still be a Divas Championship. I think that, you know, not having it is um, an insult or saying that it's a, a bad championship to have. I think... You know, it's an insult to the women that were on the road 300 to 350 days a year. You know, they barely went home to see their family holding this Divas Championship. So I feel like um, in that aspect, there should still be, it should be looked at fondly, not like it's an insult. Because a couple of years ago, you talked about bringing back the Divas Championship. Yeah. And it was like controversy. I, I get so tired of the, the oh, well, that's it's controversial or whatever. It's not, it's not controversial when you look at the talent that was back then. I mean, yeah, they didn't get to spotlight their talents as much as they should have. But, I mean, Beth Phoenix was an incredible worker. She was a champ, you know. Michelle McCool was incredible. She was a champ. Melina was awesome. Like, Mickey was awesome. Like, how can you say that the Divas Championship didn't mean anything? Because you only saw those those short matches on TV didn't mean those girls couldn't have longer matches than they did on the house shows. I would love to have the Divas Championship back. To say, yes, I can be sexy. Yes, I can be strong. Yes, I can be intelligent. I can be all of these things at once. I mean, obviously fans and the company kind of, they give the respect to Attitude Era, but they don't give the respect to Divas Era, right? Who do you think are some of the talents in the Divas Era that are currently still to this day very underrated? Um, Mickey James. Mickey James could be doing what any of the like AJ Styles. AJ is, he's been in this industry for a very long time and he's still having those high profile matches. Um, He's been, worked in every, almost every major wrestling company. Mickey could do the same thing. Mickey has given back so much to this industry and I feel like she never gets the respect that she deserves. I mean, and Natalia is still there. Natalia was there when I was there and she's still there. You know, like, it's crazy. Alicia Fox, she was there almost when she retired 2019. Like, so, I mean, she was there for a really long time. I mean, she's another one. She was breaking barriers, shattering glass ceilings. And so, like, there are tremendous women from then. And, like, Beth, she's still there. She's now on commentary mentoring the young girls. So, like, there's there's 
incredible women from that time that unfortunately be, are put underneath, I don't know, dark cloud or something. And it's like, why? There are terrible things that happened during the Attitude Era. I mean, there, from everything from, you know, people you know, dying too young or drug over, there were terrible things that happened, but you still respect the talent. Even though there were things that happened in the Divas era, like the management not giving enough time to the women and not supporting them with t-shirts and merchandise the way that they do now, doesn't mean you disrespect the talent. Let's move to the fourth moment, and it is... This celebration is not for you. I want you to lay down. Just like she is. This is disgusting. The knockout championship. Yeah. The gold. How was the taste of gold? It was wonderful. It was <laughs> it really was. And the 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 greatest part about that was what came out of that entire storyline. I mean, winning gold was awesome and I get to sign it now and I get to take I had pictures taken with it and everything. And that's really cool. But what I'm more impressed with is where these women went um, from that particular year and a half of um, impact. I mean, you look at Mia Yim and you look at Chelsea and you look at Allie and Allison Kay, who's just on the cusp and uh, you know, so you uh, you look at these people and what they're doing now, and that is the true power of a championship. Yes, I held it, but I was I was more using it as a like a trampoline for other people. You know, like I'll bounce and you bounce. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I think two things. I think you're, first of all, too humble about your wrestling ability the entire interview. But second of all, this is for the fans. Now that Maria is going to ROH, you gotta check out ROH Experience because hashtag choose your honor. And if you want to see Maria wrestle and right on that page, you might see her wrestle again. Is that true? It, it is true. Um, I am giving the fans what they want, what they want to truly experience. And so that is choose your honor. So if you really want me to wrestle and I'll lace up the boots, it's fine. Not that I can wear boots. I wear tennis shoes and kick pads, but that's fine. But I'll do it. I mean, I'll get fabulous gear. We'll have some kind of like gimmicky thing to go around it and I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it in a heartbeat. More for my children. Um, I want them to see mommy out there kicking some butt. Then I would do it for myself, but I do it for the fans. I mean, you're really short selling yourself because I feel like most casual fans don't know this. I didn't even know this. You have commonalities with China because you're the very few women that wrestled in New Japan. Yeah. I trained my butt off before because I didn't know like how much I was going to be in the ring and in the match. So the Bullet Club was, they were amazing. They, they know their story. They know their fans. And so we gave them what they wanted and it was so much fun. I've never been treated so well as I was when I was working for New Japan. I had my own locker room. I, you know, they were super respectful of me. Like I, I just, I felt as if I was part of a really cool group of guys. Would you consider wrestling with a Joshi wrestler? I would for sure. Ooh. <laughs> Let's move to the fifth moment, and it is... Get down on your back, like you usually do. Count! One, two, three! First ever pregnant champion! When you won the 24-7 championship, being the first ever pregnant champion. You know, um, I thought we might go that direction with it, and um, it was really cool to do. I mean, I literally have living in my house now the youngest champion of all time in any wrestling company. You're right, I you're mean, right. He lives in my house. I, I feel really honored because he's co-champs with me. He was, uh, I don't know how many weeks I was. I might have been 18 weeks or something like that. Yeah, so we were, we were co-champions together. It was amazing. Um, everybody likes to rag on my husband about it, but it's like, why? It's a story. It's fun. Nobody, nobody watches like these uh, zombie apocalypse shows and go, "Oh, the zombies are real." Like I wasn't actually pinning my husband. Like if he wanted to, he could get up at any time. He just chose to let his pregnant wife pin him, which is saying how strong he is as a man. You're right. There's nothing emasculating about it. If anything, it was very 
manly of him to do that I, on I, TV. It's incredibly empowering. I yes, it's so funny. Like Mike and I have been, um, we, we've been having a little bit of fun with the Twitter, Twitter trolls lately, with all the manly gifts. I I find this fake idea of bravado i i find it insulting to so many people like i veer towards the masculine masculine like i i just do i grew up that way i grew up with you know my father being a very strong man and so i have taken on some of those more masculine traits and i wouldn't say i'm less of a woman because i take a, I would I just wouldn't I wouldn't put it that way you know this idea Mike and I have been having a lot of fun with because it's just ridiculous it's so weird fragile masculinity when when Mike took your what? last name they're like how can he do that they're so confused we actually talked about it he was thinking about taking my last name and me taking his so it was equal it was a real thing that we did talk about doing was taking each other's last name because we believe in equality in our relationship and it's just so funny to me that people you're less of a human because uh because you're in a storyline like what it's so weird to me no 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 i'm right it I mean, this storyline was so buzzworthy. Everyone was talking about oh, it. Wow. Everyone's like, is she pregnant? Is she not? And then you posted a photo. Like, where was this going? And we didn't see the end of it, unfortunately. But where was it going? I was supposed to be on TV another four weeks. And then um, Mike was going to literally turn on me and be like, I don't need this. I'm going to go do my thing. And like, he was going to use that he's a recovering drug addict and all of this like um, really positive stuff to like build this positive inspirational character and be the baby face um, that he truly is. Um, and it just didn't go anywhere. I think it's really sad in, in that sense. But um, the most important thing to me is that so many women have said to me how empowering the storyline was, how great it was to see a pregnant woman on WWE, how um, how inspiring it was for me to win a championship even though I was pregnant because so many people paint pregnant ladies like they're disabled. It's actually the definition um uh, of uh, pregnancy in like federal law is as a disability. So like uh, to see someone out there pregnant and I think I left, I might've been 20 weeks when they had me written off TV. Maybe it was a little further along, but um, you know, to see me with a pregnant bump, she is out there and she's still moving and grooving and traveling around. It, it was, it was inspiring to women. And for me, if that's all that comes out of it, that's good enough for me. That's enough. I'm sad that they made my husband look so crappy, but at the end of the day, like it also gave him such great motivation to get back out there and kill it. So, you know, Lacey just announced her pregnancy on Raw yesterday too. Mm -hmm. um, so this is like the first time we're seeing active wrestlers being sidelined because of pregnancy, like with Becky and Lacey and you too. And Maurice and uh, Brandy. You know, a lot of the wrestling fans who hasn't had this experience are so confused and they're like, how can they like ruin their career like this? Like there's criticisms. And I'm like, what do you feel about that? I'm, I'm going to try and be nice. So there's this idea that we belong to the fans and we do not. And most of our careers are short lived. Thank the Lord. I've had a very long career, but a lot of times they're short. You know, when I was, when I was in WWE the first time, it was five years, five years. That was, that was the limit to most women that were in the industry. Um, and that was a long career. So why would I give up my entire life? for just a few years. Even though I've been working in wrestling for 17 years now, um, and probably will do another 10, who knows, depends on what, where we take things in Ring of Honor, you know, and maybe I'll end up backstage in 20 years uh, doing more of the production side. But why would I sacrifice my family for a few fans? That's not worth it to me. It really isn't. It's not worth it to um, just be this idea of hotness. Kim Kardashian, who is one of the most followed people in the world, um, 
you know, whether it's women, men, uh, gay, straight, whatever. One of the most like iconic women. Um, she has a lot of babies. <laughs> <laughs> yes, correct. And she shows her butt. Uh. She she shows how sexy she is. She's not afraid of it. She's almost. I, is she forty? She might have just turned forty. Like, come on. And one of the most searched things online is MILF. So, like, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. It's this very small group of incredibly young people that don't don't understand. My husband, he loves me that I have had two babies. He loves that I'm older. Like, I remember when we first started dating and I was like, I'm a few years older than you. He's like, no, no, that's what I like. Uh. Like, come on. <laughs> I was joking with uh, with some fans back and forth, and I was like, maybe it's time for number three. And, you know, the hate I get is just incredible. Like, how could you? Bah, why? So you're going to yell at me? Like, no, I'm going to live my life, and you're going to live your life. Hey, how dare you have a family? I can't <laughs> believe you. Ugh, you got a dog? I hate dogs. Like, no, I love dogs. And, like, why would I do that? so ridiculous i don't live my life to appeal to the haters i live my life for my family and i live my life for the fans that love me no matter what and i will love you back and i can't wait i keep talking about having like a hug mosh pit the first time we all can have a show together <laughs> i'm just gonna like be like yeah this is cool that i'm in the ring but peace i'm gonna go into the crowd and i'm gonna just start hugging people be like i love you i missed you Please be my friend. We need people. This is such a weird time in wrestling because women are now just, our, our career length is growing. And then unfortunately our bodies are like, um, yo, so at like 40, we're going to stop, you know, being able to have babies as easily. And then by like 45, it gets really tough. So we really have to, we got to like fit it in in this window. But again, Wonder Woman in the last film, she was pregnant. This is happening, people. This is just life. You're part of our journey. Have fun with it. If we gain a little weight and become like a, a, a nice, happy pregnant lady, hey, that's okay. Guess what? The bounce back is cool. Or yes. maybe I almost bounce back, but I really like those extra 10 pounds because they're nice <laughs> and soft and fluffy. Like, whatever. <laughs> now I got this new shape and my booty is looking fly uh, because it's a little bigger. Like, hey, yes. be on the journey. Speaking of the fans that love you, they loved when you were in the Evolution Battle Royale mm -hmm. and Royal Rumble. How was that experience like? Oh, it was great. The, uh, the women I worked with, like, uh, Naya took care of me, Tamina took care of me, Lacey, uh, Charlotte, they were wonderful. And, uh, and, and then Foxy, like they were so good to me and they wanted to play and I like to play in the ring. Like I don't take it too serious. So like, I, and I'm terrified of going over the top rope. So like <laughs> we had to find very convenient ways of being like, <laughs> just floating out of the ring because I don't like that bump. I, I'll take all the moves in the world from the guys in the ring or on the apron, but the over the, I don't oh, like it. Nope. It's not. Okay. Like it. How did that hat spot with Alicia Fox happen? So she had this crazy hat and she wanted to have some fun. And I said, okay, so can I crush it? And the thing is, is that sucker was made of like cement. I was like jumping up and down on it and that thing wouldn't break. Ah, what? Wow, 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 wow. It was wow. Great yeah. with your jacket, but never mind. And yeah. she took it to the yeah. back and she was able to put it back together. Oh. <laughs> like, I need that fashion designer to like fit my body so that it stays in like this little shape. Now that you're out of WWE, who excites you? outside of WWE, who, which women, women's wrestler that you're really excited to work with? There's so many, um, there really is. Um, it, and there's so many that I've worked with in the past that I'm hoping to work with again. People that have built other people's careers like Lufisto. I'm on a crusade because I feel like, you know, I, I would like to see her in a mean spot in one of these larger companies for a, a, a lengthy period of time. There's a girl, uh, Max the Impaler. Um, she oh, yes. She, I mean, incredible, absolutely incredible. It's such a strong personality and character. And uh, so she's another one. Uh, there's uh, Miranda Lay's feisty, crazy luchador. 
uh, that I, I would love to, you know, just see in more matches. Cause you watch on YouTube and you're like, okay, um, Roxy, who she's out of Texas and so young and just so, young. so brilliant. And, uh, she is just rooted in the ground and the people that I compare her to like Diana, like a young Diana or a young Becky, where it's like when they move around the ring, it's like, they're doing something. And it's like, yes, there's, there's so many. And I, I'm just so excited to, uh, uh Faye Jackson, who, Oh, oh that yeah. is so sassy. I love it. I love it. So sassy. It, sexy photos on Instagram, and I miss her. And she just, I just want to snuggle. But like, I, I, I think that she just gets better and better in the ring. And um, I'd love her to um, come back to Ring of Honor. So there's, there's a good group. A women out there and then my husband's on this tour right now uh doing different wrestling shows and he just keeps sending me names and i'm like watching all these women wrestlers and i was like how are they all so good like how am i gonna like narrow it down and um <laughs> it's like you know for me though it's it's finding a little bit of everything really putting all the pieces of what it means to be in a women's division all together are you a powerhouse are you a grappler are you a luchador are you you know uh, young and up and coming and at uh, the prodigy like what what are what are these pieces that we're putting together um and that i'm i'm really excited to see moving forward well thank you so much maria for counting down top five moments with us as a first lady of pro wrestling thank what you do so you want to see in the next five years of women's wrestling more opportunities um, more 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 um, right now, women do get more time on television. I feel like the characters as a whole could be built to be more whole characters rather than just one thing. Um, yes, I understand you are strong, but I would like to see something else. Or I, yes, you are a fantastic wrestler, but tell me more. Um, I think Becky has done a fantastic job of that, and I want to see more of that. I want to see more uh, women that, you know, have these full characters and it's it's not really on them it's on how much time they get on television because when when you only get a couple minutes of course you're just going to show one thing because otherwise it's very confusing so um i want to see more well-rounded characters in wrestling because they have more opportunities on television i'd like to see that i'd like to see uh the women's championships no matter what company put on just as much of a pedestal as they are the men's so if there is going to be a press conference there is the men's champion there is the women's champion i don't believe that women's championship is a gender i believe it's a title and it's a title that should be represent represented in the same kind of way that a uh, men's championship should be i'm hoping that you will see that in Ring of Honor, but I also hope that you see it in other companies as well, because I believe that success should be given freely to everyone. I am so excited to see what's gonna happen with the Woman of Honor, cause that's so exciting. Yes, and there will be announcements made. Um, I'm trying not to give too much away because I know what's coming because some of it has already been filmed. But yeah, there's uh, there's exciting announcements coming up. I can't wait to give more opportunities to women in the world of wrestling. Thank you, Maria. One last thing you want to tell your fans. Uh, follow me on Instagram. Uh, it's Maria Canellis and it is a mix of everything on Instagram. My uh, official Facebook, which is official Maria Canellis, that's more just Maria photos. Uh, if you want to get really sexy, go to my Patreon account, which is just under Maria Canellis. Um, it's just uh it's just me there and then on twitter uh you will get lots of sarcasm which is maria l canellis <laughs> All my sarcasms all rolled into one. You can also watch us on ASY, my crazy little family. Uh, it's called The Bennetts, but there is a free episode right now on YouTube. So um, you can get a taste of what we're doing. 